Hello everybody, this is Barbie. Um, I thought I would uh, do a little quick little video here just showing you a bit about what I'm doing. These are some stamps that I decided to use on a piece of uh, tea dyed or coffee dyed paper. And after I got them all stamped on, I thought, well, I think I'm gonna try doing some watercolor to give them some color and this is what I've done so far. I think, I think they turned out pretty cool. So uh, I thought I would maybe do one or two for you just to show you uh, how simple and easy it is. I, I'm not going to color that one. I'm just going to... Uh, here's the butterfly I started. I'll come back and, and put a little bit darker. Once you put the original color on, uh, it's real wet and you have to let it dry. So then you come back and add a little bit more color to it. So, let's see, where is my, this is my frog I just did. And that's got just one coat on it, so I'll come back. And this one here was kind of a play with, because when I stamped it, as you can see, the, the letters are kind of blurry, so I, I may not use that one, or I may just tear around it and not use the lettering. I haven't decided yet. Anyhow, I was playing with that one. So I'll go ahead and finish this one up, and then we'll do one more, but... Before we do that, let me show you what I've gotten done um, on my cover. I finished up my whoops, finished up my cover and added more leaves from I think from my last video. Um, added this. This here's another one of the little. Let me make sure I'm in frame. <clears throat> Yep, okay. Added the little dragonfly, which I did in the same technique I'm going to show you here, where I did a stamp and painted it in with watercolor. And um, added some smaller leaves, as I'm sure you've noticed, to kind of frame it and give it that, you know, like they're out in the woods, like this one here. He's got his little, or she, whoever, has his little uh, grass bed made. So they, he would have used leaves around it to make it and dried uh, grasses, etc. So I thought this really uh, framed it nicely. So also on the inside, I, I also uh, added this around the edges, the ticking, and added the, uh, uh, we used to call it burlap, but anyhow, it's, it's uh, kind of a toe sack looking, what we used to call a toe sack that they used to put grains and seeds in on the farm type uh, weave. So I thought it was really appropriate for uh, this journal, considering it's a Woodlands journal. And I've got my signatures all organized. Um, I have my template marked off for three signatures. And uh, this is the grid. So, I'm going to put it there in the middle. And that's how I'm going to arrange my holes. So then I can match my signatures. I have a pattern then to use on my signatures. And you can see demonstrations for doing that on uh, a lot of channels. So I'm not going to do that on screen. Just because it's been done and done and done. If you know what I mean. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside and um, show you what I've gotten done so far on the signatures. This was um, just something that I put together and did a little bit of stamping on that. Here's another one of those stampings. This is a Mackie stamp, uh, as well as the frog, and several of these are Mackie stamps. Some of them are Tim Holt stamps. And then I made a little paper sack here and decorated it and put some butterflies in that. I'm not gonna color those butterflies. I like to have both um, the colored and the non-colored ones, so it gives it different a different look. I think this page here lends itself to just the black and white and brown colors. Then I will put, I just stuck that in there just to remind myself that something needs to go in there. I may or may not use that. I haven't decided exactly how I'm going to attach this to the page yet. But again, it's just a little paper sack that I found in my stash. And I will either do a flip 
or I will just glue it down. And I may even glue it down, use a, make a tag for in here, and then um, leave it to where I can put another tag. But normally I don't do that just because my um, journals tend to be very bulky anyhow, so I usually just do like a tag in the sack because it gets a little bit overwhelming after a while. This is a trifold. So when I stitch it in to the signature, it'll be stitched in like so, so that there'll be other pages in on top, so this will open up like that. So it's already got a trifold there, so I probably, just for bulkiness reasons, um, if that's a word, uh, I will probably just um, do it like that, because then you've got another space over here for sticking stuff in, and on the back as well. So that tends to make that page really bulky. Okay, this is what I did for this page here. I made a little tag, just a little simple tag. And I may or may not do more to that one. This is just the beginning of putting things together and then uh, I will go through my journal and decide uh, what else I want to do to it. Again, I, I had something in this little cutout in my stash and I just backed a leaf so it, it's a, you know, leaf on both sides and did a little small journaling card stick in there like so. And let's see, these haven't decorated these yet. This I haven't either. So I think that's, oh, I did this probably. You didn't see that. Now this, <clears throat> I just did a collage there. We're using the leaves. Um, this is what the uh, page looked like. It's just a fold out of that page. But I didn't want to just leave it just the book page, so I added that to it to give it some interest. And probably what I will do is, when I stitch this in, but I'll wait and decide if I want to or not, I will probably um, attach it here and here so that you can tuck stuff in here. Or if I don't do that, then I could... Well, you'll see over here on this one. Okay, did a little collage there. Now these are just all simple ideas. It, it doesn't, it isn't anything that necessarily needs a uh, tutorial for or to show you even. Uh, but I'll give you ideas of of the different elements you can put in your on your journal pages. This was a, just a little piece um, that I had in my stash. Don't know where it came from, as well as this piece here. So I did a um, two pocket page. So I just made that into a pocket. Again, out of my stash, put the little bird in there. These little mice come um, is off of the, out of the book, the Undercliff. And it was some of her sketches she did for the mice that are, or she painted on the front and back pages. So I cut those out individually and attached them. And again, these are just some other little elements that I had and I backed them with some of the painters uh, green painters tape for journaling okay this one is a page that again uh, out of the book and I used um, washi tape I had butterfly washi tapes I believe it's Tim Holtz and, and attached it I glued it and attached it uh, to the flap by sewing it um, this is a graphics fairy um, out of one of their um, premium member sites where you can get all of these beautiful um, photo elements or I guess they were photo, out of photo books. No, photo albums, I guess. Okay, so I wanted to attach this like that. This is a, a like, looks like a, a young lady that's looking at flowers and this is what I was thinking. Uh, she's been walking in the forest and she sees these beautiful flowers and the grasses and everything so she's picking them so I thought it was appropriate to add a bit of um, interest in this um, I don't know what you call it anyhow you know what I'm saying then I made this tag uh, this these this tree I'll have to look and see what this is but I'll put it in my description 
um, but it's a digital print that has like shadows of trees and leaves, which I thought see you can see in its place you can journal on the back. Again, this is a graphic fairy a moth, just in black and white, and I just um, you know glued two of them together and left the bottom open so that I could put it on top and use it for a tab and stitched around it to give it extra strength and durability. And um, then uh, on this photo frame, I put a backing of some paper on there, which then I had printed, uh, I believe this was my porch prints, a uh, lace digital. Anyhow, I wanted something pretty to show through, but not to be um, overwhelming for the beautiful front here. And then this is gonna be a little tab, which I have not glued on yet. And I took two leaves and glued them together at the very top half and trimmed it because they, you know, they weren't exact mirrors. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it and put it on like that to be a flip tab. And, and that will go back in here. So what my idea here is, and I like to do it this way, I kind of like to develop my uh, pages before I actually do my stitching in so that I can get a, a feeling for how bulky it's going to be. And um, that way I can, if I've gotten it too bulky, I can take away some things or adjust it in some way before I actually stitch it in. Because once you stitch it in, of course, Daddy used to say it'd be too wet to plow, that's it. You just, you're done. You're done. So, I don't know how I'm going to put these in. And this is, a, again, another element that I had done. I think I showed you that the last time. So, I thought this is a more of a detailed, very, I mean, more of a, it's got a lot more happening is what I'm saying. So, I'm using this for probably the cover of this signature is what I'm thinking. And that way, it can be the first thing that you open up. That's my thought right now. But I probably won't put this right next to it because, as you can see, it's kind of bulky. Okay. Let's see. I'll put all that together for right now. I don't think, I don't know if I did anything else or not. I'll look through here real quick. I think that's as far as I got yesterday. So what I'm thinking about is I'm, I'm trying to kind of go through and make a decision on how much embellishment I'm going to do. Again, this was Angela Kerr's idea. I think we talked about that in the first video. And this right here, I'm thinking about doing similar as I did with the photo frame. But I haven't decided for sure, so I got it clipped in there. And I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do with that. And that I'm going to put in the middle rather than on the outer. So I think I haven't done more in that one. So that's basically what I've gotten done so far. And like I said, there's nothing there that's all that um, hard to do or takes a lot of knowledge to do it. So I didn't see any point in doing a demo of that. And it takes a while to put it together and a lot of uh, time. So it's like, well, it'd be better just to show it to you and let you have the idea of, of the different elements that you could put on your page. Gotta have a cup of coffee. I mean, a sip of coffee, excuse me. Okay. Let's do a little painting here. Okay, first I'm gonna put a second coat. Use my little water brush here. You don't have to have an expensive brush. Any little brush will do. I like the little pointy brushes. Um, and what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna add a little bit of darker green, which I've already got some green mixed up over here. See if that will darken up. See, I'm now I'm going to put the darker green in the little darker areas that have been shaded in. On the froggy's leg. Down is his foot. Around his 
face. And then probably what I'll do is come back with just water on my brush and fade it out a little bit, such as right here. I don't know if you can see that or not, but I'm just adding a little water around the edges of where I put the hard core color. You know, it's just straight color. Just add a little bit of um, water there, which fades out the line. So it doesn't look like it's just a some darker color, in other words. Kind of fades it all out and blends it in. And I try to stay away from the lightest lights and leave those there because they're like a light green. So you can see the dimension it has already given that uh, frog. So now on this, um, oh, my hands are dry. I just looked down and saw they were hurting and I thought to myself, why is my hands hurting? I need to put some moisturizer on them, but I don't have any out here. So, uh, let's see. See this darker area around here? This is a green pear. So I think what I'll do is add some yellow before I put the darker green all around the edges. I'm gonna put some yellow, brighter yellow. Um, there on the middle of the pear. You know how a pear. Now I laid my color down and now I'm gonna take just some water clean water and I'm going to go around the edges where I laid the color down just touch the edges a little bit and that just allows that color original color to blend out a bit now because I want a little bit more dimension to that yellow I'm going to take a more of a golden yellow and just drop it here and there and allow the watercolor to kind of do its thing. You know what I mean? I just touch it. If I got too much in there, I just touch it here and there. Now you see how this needs to be darker down here? Because in a ball, the lightest part's in the middle and then it gets darker as it goes around. So this is where I'm going to take the darker um, green that I have mixed up over here and I'm gonna add it to the shadow color, which is the, sh which they have shaded in already for you. Thank you. And I'm gonna bring it all the way around the edge of the pear. And then I'm gonna bring in a little bit of a limeier green And just touch it here and there. There. Now, I'll let that set for a little bit and see if we like it. Now, this little frog, he needs to have a little bit of color to his eye. So I'm going to take some of that bright yellow and just touch that eyeball a bit. All we want is a little color on that eye so that you notice it's an eye. There you go. Now, let me get rid of some of that color. Now, this doesn't have to be perfect. All it's got to do is to put some color down to say that this has been like hand painted. That's the whole idea. Now, on this yellow flower over here, I'm going to use. A little bit of that golden color uh, yellow that's a little more of a brownie yellow around in the darker areas just to give it a bit of dimension so the whole idea is that you don't want it one flat color you want to be able to say I see different colors I see a darker color in the uh, around the edges 
which gives it um, a dark a shape and then I see lighter colors in the more of the highlighted areas um, since we're just doing um, basic real basic coloring here where's my water um, we don't want to get too technical and they're little bitty things number one so you're just adding a bit of color to it all right now the center of this flower I'm probably gonna make a brown a brownie color real technical brownie color <laughs> there you go and the stem you don't even have to do anything to it because it's already uh, a dark color so there you go okay we'll set that back and let it dry for a bit and we'll see what we think on that one okay let's see let's see if we can what's going to happen if we paint this well let's paint this little bug here now this little bug doesn't have much to paint really but we need to make a decision on what color the wings are going to be. Now, normally the wings are kind of a bluey, um, almost a gray, but kind of with the tint of blue to it. So I have some uh, bluey gray. It's blue mixed with a little brown mixed up over here. And I'm going to water that down quite a lot to start out with because I can always darken it. And let's see what we got here. Now, it's going to look darker when I first put it down, and it will lighten up. So, I think that's going to be about right. Now, for the body, um, I'm going to add some color to the body where the light, light colors are, just because it needs, I think, like bugs are a lot of times very bright colors. So, I'm going to put some red on him. I need to get... Some pretty dark red or it won't show up. And I'm just going to put a little red here and there. Almost just touching. Touching the bug. And clean my brush out a little bit. And then I'm going to put some orange, I think. Because I noticed that a lot of the bugs... Yeah, I'm going to have to mix up an orange. A lot of the bugs are um, mixed, red and orange is mixed together, so. Let me see what I can do here. Yeah, there you go. Maybe that'll work. No, nope, that's not a good color. Now, this particular yellow, that's another thing. Uh, certain yellows and I don't remember what color I think that's that Naples yellow they're um, got white mixed in the color itself so because the white is already mixed in there to make it that color um, it doesn't make a vibrant yellow color so it makes the any, any paint you mix up with it will make it look chalky you know what I mean? So, we don't want to use that color. Now, see, that's a cleaner orange. And that is bright red. That's what they're calling it. This is a sh shimiki watercolor palette. But that's not enough difference in my opinion. So let me clean this out. I tell you what, let me demonstrate to you what else you can do, which is probably a little easier for you that don't have watercolor uh, paints. It adds a, a little different color. These are Karen Dosh and their watercolor pencils. There you go. So, 
with this, it's very easy. You can just take it like a coloring pencil and color in your spots. And then if you want to make it fade out just a little bit, you have to be real careful. Just touch it, touch your brush with a little bit of water in it and then touch the color. which makes it, um, it gives it a little bit of extra. I'm going to take this orange pencil here and see what happens when I add a, well, it's not going to work until you let it dry a little bit. But after it dries, you can come back in and add a little bit extra. Now on the wings, let me get this out of the way because it's sliding and causing me a, problem. Now on the wings, um, I'm going to add a little extra color to the wings. What color do I want to put? I just want interest is all. I just want to where you say, oh, look at that pretty bug. You want to think of the bug as being pretty and not a bug, if you know what I mean. So I'm going to make him have some little limey colored wings. This is not about being biologically or whatever you call it correct. This is artist. This is artistic license to do whatever you want. Which I think helps people to, helps you to just let loose and play. And that's what this is about. Let's see what happens if we put a little bit of this white pencil in here. I don't know. And it's still wet, so we can't do that. So we're going to let that dry for a while. All right. Now, real quick here, let's decide. Maybe we ought to do the... We've done a, a bug. There's a little bees. Let's see if we can finish up this right here before we do anything else. Okay, I've already got some red paint in there. Let me see if I can get rid of this real quick. And there you go. Okay, we're going to put in a darker red color. And I think where these little dark spots are, I'm gonna use the darker red color. Kind of give me a pattern. And and then I'll come back with a little bit of water. And you can see this is easy. Do anything you want. There you go. Now I'm going to come back with a teeny bit of water. I'm just going to touch it here and there. And all that does is allows that watercolor to activate and soften it a bit. Now, probably what I will do is, once this dries, I will come back in with a darker pencil and do a little bit more definition to it. Now, I haven't done the center of the flower yet, so let's see what color. Let's put a dark blue in there, just for fun. So another way you can do these pencils is just to touch it with some water on your brush and it acts just like paint and then you can just dab it around for the center now I also might come in with a little bit of straight water 
and touch around the very edge so that it, that color will kind of blend out a little bit into the flower itself. So it's not just a hard circle. Now on the butterfly's head, I've already got a purple in there. So I think I'm gonna put just a little bit of black like where his eyes would be on the very side of the head and just leave it be. Um, because I'm gonna have to cut around this or tear around it. So I'm not going to do a lot else to the like legs and things like that because it's pretty, they're pretty uh, small. Okay, we still have to come back later and work on that. Okay, let's see here. Oh, I was going to um, maybe do this little mouse real quick for you. Now, as you can see on these bugs, I mean, they're, they're just little simple, a few, maybe, maybe only a couple of colors. Now I put more on, on the little Katie did because most Katie dids are like green and blue. I haven't done this big bug yet, but he's mostly black. So probably what I'll use on him is, again, most of those real black bugs, when you see them in the light, they're blues and greens. So I'll probably do that. I think I'm going to come back with this little bug and put some bright green on him because he's mostly blue now. Um, and then I did the little poppy. So let's see what we can get done with this one right here. Okay, mouse. A mouse? A mouse is normally kind of um, browns and grays. So what I do is probably put the lighter color in first. So maybe the gray. Now also you can do it this way. You wet your now, I don't know if it'll work on this or not, but I'm going to try it and see. Now, let's see if it works. Yeah, it looks like it probably will. Yep. So, we're all we're doing is putting down the lightest colors. I've already um, I've already added a bit of color to these, but I'm going to add more. Okay, now I don't know what that little thing there is. Looks like a bit of a carrot. That's what I'm going to call it as a carrot. <laughs> so we're going to paint it. We're going to we're going to color it kind of orangey color. Now I'm going to. Put the orange directly on there. And then add a bit of water. Now on the underside, I'm gonna make it more of a brown color. So I'm not gonna put push real hard when I put that color in. I'm not gonna push real hard because I'm gonna add a little bit of the lighter color in there too. So I put both orange and brown, I mean, yeah, orange and brown in there. Get a little bit of water on there and just touch it here and there. There you go. Now, the little mouse usually has pink ears. I don't have a really good pink here, but again, doesn't matter. So I'm gonna get some red and put it down and probably add a little bit of some sort of pink to it. Let's see what happens with that color. Now I need a little bit more water. But what I do is I touch into the color and then touch it to my uh, rag to see what color it is, and to see if it's too dark or what it is. Let's see if you can, hopefully you can see that. So I touch into it, get some water. Yeah, it looks good. 
We add a little bit of pink to the top part of his ears. And a little bitty pink nose. And I also may go put a little pink around his eyes. Oh, and I also may add a little pink to his tail too. Because you know, mice usually have a little bit of pink on their tail where there isn't a whole lot of hair. Okay. And as you can see, it's very subtle. I mean, there's not a whole lot to it. All right, let's get some color here on the... This looks like a... Uh, what do you call it? Blue salvia plant. A bloom, rather. That's what I would call it. So I'm going to touch a little bit of water. Yeah. On the uh, tip of the... Uh, pencil and I'm just going to paint the dark areas because this is a dark blue and continue on down just putting a little bit of color here and there okay now this really works good uh, for small areas this technique so, let's see what we can do for the stem here. Let's put a little bit of green on that stem. All the water does is soften the color a bit to, I mean, activate the color a bit is what it does. Now that's working good. Okay, then we need a lighter blue in that uh, light part of the le of the bloom, rather, as you can see, that adds a little bit of highlight and dimension to it. Works pretty good. Even if you don't really see the lighter pieces there, go ahead and put it on there. I mean, you know, it's your it's your painting. You can do whatever you want, right? There you go. Now, let's see what else we've got. Um, that's still pretty wet. We'll put it aside. Let's see what we can do with our little butterfly here. Now, this may be too much because it's not a very sharp edge. So we're going to start out easy. Now all I'm going to do is kind of make a definition between them. You know, the butterfly veins or whatever you want to call it. To define areas a little bit more that have been kind of covered up. Because of the painting. Because of the color rather okay doesn't have to be a whole lot just enough to say butterfly I think that's pretty good yep I would do a whole lot more okay now that's still too wet Oh, we said we were going to add a little bit of um, color to the back of this little bug here. Get this out of the way. Let me see if this color will even show up on the, his back. It has little stripes on his back. Yeah, seems to. Yep, I think that's ba basically all I would do to him. And I would call him done. I may come back with a little bit of yellow. Let me see what happens if I put a little yellow on him every now and then. 
what happens is it's still too wet and it doesn't stick. Well, there you go. Let's try a little bit of yellow over here. Yeah, that works. So in the lighter spots, I'm uh, adding the yellow. Just a random pattern. And that gives you a little bit of highlight that was missing before. And also on the eye, put a little bit of yellow. Now, um, I haven't done that bug. Oh, let me see about this bug right here. I'm not liking his wings. He needs more light here and there on him. So I'm going to touch him with some yellow here and there. And I think what I'm going to do, which would probably work better, and it just hit me. When this dries, I'm going to come back in with a um, palette pen, or yeah, I think that's what they're called permanent pen. I'll show you in a minute. All right, we're gonna leave him until we come back. And then maybe a little bit of color to his wings. Not all over, just a little bit. Okay, there you go. Now, let's see if this is dry enough. He's still pretty wet. All right, let me see about the palette pen here. This is a permanent Lumo Color Stadler. Fine. I don't know if it's gonna be fine enough. Probably need extra fine. Let me see. Well, let me test it on this one. He's still wet. I think this might work. Yeah. I'm just not real happy with the color on this one here, but we'll see. This looks more like it's um, would work for making the veins on a, that you've covered up with your color, you know what I mean? Kind of bringing those veins back. So this would probably be a good um, choice rather than the watercolor for the veins. Watercolor was just making it a little bit nondescript and you want, the veins are like, you know, you're supposed to be able to see the veins. Yeah, that'll be okay. And you could do the same thing off and on on this to kind of make a bit of uh, darkness and light because everything that you paint, what gives it dimension is the juxt juxtaposition of the darks and the lights. So if it starts looking flat, then that's what's wrong with it. It needs more um, distinction between dark and light. Okay. You can also overdo it, which I tend to do. Enough of that. All right. Let's see. Let's see what happens if you add a little bit of dark lines to this side of the bug. Now that works pretty good. See, a lot of this is just like, okay, let's just try this. I mean, what do you got to lose? Let's see if I can get the bug eyes put back on. There you go. Got a little bug eye, bug nose. And a little bit of definition to the 
body. It kind of um, looks like little uh, sections. There, that worked. Now we need to come in with, like if I was really serious about this, I'd probably get an extra fine marker. So if you got an extra fine um, pen like this, it would probably be better. But this doesn't have to be a museum piece, you know what I mean? Okay, I think that's good. And right here on his eyes, on the back side of his eyes, I'm going to make a little half moon, which then makes the eyes a little bit more distinct. And also maybe do a little bit of touching here and there with this black marker. Not a, not a whole line, just a touch. And again, where there's a little bit of definition here, you can add a little bit of, of definition to those symbols or those um, uh, markings, is what I'm trying to say here. Okay. Now, I don't think I would do a whole lot more. Just because you can overdo it and then it becomes too um, doesn't look free it looks uh, contrived and I think the Katie did came out pretty good I think I'd leave that little Katie did alone and this bug right here he needs a bit of outline in two so again, we're with a real light touch. I'm gonna make a little bit of definition because it looks like he has some sections that has that, that maybe I've covered up with the paint. So it needs to be like brought back out. And I think he's good to go. You see how that black pen really does help? Let me see if my mouse is dry. Yep. Okay. This little uh, bug right here, ladybug, needs his black marks put back in. They've been covered up. So I'm gonna just use this pen just to add back in the black uh, more distinctively. And that's going to be good for that one. Okay, on this one, the same thing. I put the paint on there and it's kind of covered up everything. So I'm going to add back in a few little stripes. And real lightly, I'm touching it real lightly. almost a, a sketchy feel to it. Hit and miss. Not a straight line. Now when I get down here to the bottom where it's darker, I'm going to make it a little bit darker. Again, that little bug is done. Okay, on the flower, I'm going to do the same thing probably, but I'm going to be probably even with a lighter touch. But where this is darker, I'm going to add dots. Just a few little dots. Like so. And <laughs> my 
my dog is snoring. Sorry. If you hear that snorting, that's my dog. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. I think that is probably good. Uh, the flower up here, you know how poppies, I'm going to turn it around this way. You know how poppies have, um, I don't know what they're called, but they're little uh, seed heads, I think is what it is. Little seed pods. So I'm going to actually draw in some of those little seed pods. Now, um, I may just do a little bit here and there at the very bottom. And maybe a little bit just because it's looking flat in certain areas. See how that worked? And a few little dots along here. Not solid, in other words. Now, I think that's pretty good. So I'm going to leave that. Now you see how that made that come out? So these are going to be some nice little elements. Oh, I forgot about that one. Just a minute, I gotta turn the heat off. Ooh, we're having a hot flash over here. This one here, uh, where all these dark areas are. Let me get the body done first. You know how butterflies and all bugs have like sections to it, so that's why I'm kind of making little uh, sections rather than just a straight line. And the eyeball. All right, that's good on that. Now, where all these little dark lines are, I think I'm going to do a little zigzag with my pen, which means it's leaving some light in there. It's not a solid color. I'm going to do the same thing all the way on each one of these little dark because this dark area is actually part of the marking of the butterfly and this is a section of his wings well I don't know if you call it a section or not but it looks like they're marked off in sections veins whatever you want to call them so I'm going to enforce the veins a bit Now you may say, well, it's sure taking you a long time to do that. Well, if you're looking at it, if you're looking at what you're doing as time, these books would never be able to be purchased because <laughs> time-wise, it takes a lot of time. But the way I look at it is it's not time. It's it's me being able to do what it is I love to do. So, to me, it's not, I don't consider it time. I consider it just being able to play and do what I want to do. So, each thing I do is actually... This is what I'm doing today, I'm playing. And this is how I'm playing. And if it brings you joy and happiness, then who cares how long it takes, right? You can choose to do it or not. I choose to do it. I like to do it. But if this is something that you say to yourself, well, that doesn't look like it's fun to me, well, then you shouldn't do it. That's how I determine it. If I'm going to do something or not. Does it make me happy? Do I like doing it? Or am I doing it because I have to do it? If I'm doing it because I have to do it, I don't do it. That's it. That's my rule. So everything I do, it's because I want to do it. Alrighty. A little bit more here. And this may be to you sort of like paint drying. So once you decide, 
whether or not it is something that you want to try or if you feel like that what I'm doing is the same thing over and over, which some of it is, but there is also different aspects of everything I do. Uh, I'm trying to share why I do certain things so that you, if you choose to do this, you can make a decision about why you want to do certain things or what kind of look are you looking for. You know what I mean? That's will be your decision. Okay. Now, see, to me, that butterfly just looks a whole lot better. Yeah. Okay. Now, I think that's probably enough. I will probably, like I said, I may play with this a little bit more. Oh, let's do our little bug here. Oh, we were going to do the mouse. Um, I get sidetracked. Okay, on the bug, I don't know what kind of bug this is, but I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to make some, a few marks here and there, dark marks, and give him a bit of definition. Same thing on the wings, but because he's so small, I'm going to be very careful how I put, how much black I put in there. So it's going to be a real light touch on this one. There you go. And I still need a little bit more for his eyes. Bugs have big eyes, you know. Okay. Now. I'm going to put a little bit of uh, extra on his body. I think that's going to be good. Okay. Our mouse is pretty well dry. So all I'm gonna do, I think, on the mouse is just take a little bit of brown. I got some more water over here. Um, take a little bit of brown. And I think I'm gonna let's see what color brown this is. It's kind of a ready brown. I don't like that brown. Maybe I'll add, let's see, what happens when you add blue to brown? Let's see. What's going to happen? Blue and brown. Makes a dark gray. Let's see. I think that might be a good color. Now, yeah, let's try that color. And it's dark in the dark spots. Kind of stay in the dark spots. Leave the light. And that's good. I see the dimension it gives him. So then I'm going to take a little bit of water on my brush, dab off a little bit of water. I don't want to get too much. And then I'm going to um, go around the edges and soften. That uh, straight dark color I put on there. And I noticed I left that light right in the middle. Okay. I think that's pretty good. Now, there is a little bit down here. So I'm going to draw some of that brown on there. Maybe I'll use this yellow ochre color we have a little bit of a darker color down here on the carrot. Yep. All right. I think that's pretty good on the mouse. I do think I'm going to 
make that pink a little pinker. Let me see on his ears. Because I'm not seeing it like I want to. And his nose. And a little bit on his tail. I think I'll even put it around his face a bit. Yep. Because they kind of have a bit of a pink around their face. All right, that will need to dry, but while that's drying, I'm going to take my pen and accentuate some of these flowers because they're dry. Not a lot. That's pretty good. Okay. Yep. Okay. I think that's about it. I probably went way too long here. But you know what happens when you're having fun. Let me see. This is what we did. And we finished up on some of this, made it look better, outlined it, finished up on some of the painting. Haven't done my little bird yet, but you know what the technique is. So hopefully you'll give it a try and add a little bit of your own artwork to your next um, journal. This um, journal is going to be a lot of fun to do, um, considering it's a lot of my favorite subjects, which is bugs, birds, flowers, and um, animals, animals of the forest. So I have some other things that I have in mind that I'm going to add, and I just have to go pick it all out. So until next time, hope you have fun doing whatever it is that you love to do, and have a beautiful day. This is Barbie saying bye-bye-bye-bye.